everyone it is danny and welcome to this update video this evening so i hope you have been enjoying your monday and we're going to be looking at both of these disturbances so one of them the one in the caribbean which is highlighted in yellow that is now designated as an invest it is an area of investigation that is being closely watched for some development although i doubt that we'll see tropical cyclogenesis uh, with this area here because of the environment that it is in that higher chance of development is given to that uh, area up there just to the southeast of bermuda so we're going to be taking a look at the latest expected for these we'll be looking at some model data as well as environmental conditions out there so let's get straight into it and we're kickstarting things looking at this wide view of the atlantic now there we can see all of that thunderstorm activity associated with that front now a portion of it is likely to break away as an area of low pressure forms and uh, that low could then try to develop itself into a hybrid becoming a subtropical cyclone and the name that it would acquire if it becomes a subtropical storm is vince so we've seen many systems that had the potential to become vince around three or four at this point but let's see if this one is going to be the one that uh, acquires that status and i have a pretty good confidence in that actually happening but the good news is that this is likely to remain offshore at least for now but it could be very close to the azores up there as it is going to be drifting around now we're going to be focusing on the caribbean disturbance for a bit here so let's drift further into the region and here we can see that there is that blob of all of that activity so where we see those grays and even those purples uh in the mix that is where we've got a lot of deep convection that is where we typically find a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity those gusty winds as well uh and these areas have the potential to unleash devastating rainfall and that is what happened on saturday in portions of the dominican republic and even earlier in puerto rico and for portions of the virgin islands as well there has been some periods of heavy rainfall so you can let me know what is happening or what has happened in your area and we are looking toward the abc islands and there we can see that there is some activity within the area as well so uh, not everywhere across aruba bonaire and curacao has received rainfall but some areas have even some thunderstorm activity as well but through most of the lesser antilles there hasn't been a whole lot mostly for the leeward islands likely overcast with a passing shower or so at the most but uh, much isn't happening today now the disturbance in the caribbean of course there's all of that convection nearby associated with a trough and we have been seeing this kind of activity where we see this area of convection building and then it falls apart then it builds again and falls apart so that is likely the work of the dry air dissipating a lot of the activity because it is in a very dry stable environment a lot of dry air is up ahead and once that infiltrates and it becomes so hostile it is unlikely that we'll see development and uh, as we look across other areas things have definitely improved for the dominican republic and uh, haiti as well much not happening similar story for most of the bahamas Turks and Caicos Islands, much of Jamaica, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, and over in Central America, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua. But in portions of Costa Rica and Panama, there has been some shower activity. For the offshore islands, much isn't going on either. The Keys, offshore of Belize, as well as the Bay Islands of Honduras, and even San Andres and Providencia. Now, let's look at what the National Hurricane Center has. We're seeing only a 10% chance being designated to this system for potential development through both 7 and 2 days. So that chance is very, very low right now. And let's look at this map here. So this is very vibrant, as you can see, with those reds, those oranges, even those browns. So it is in a very dry, stable environment. And as it drifts further to the west, it will encounter a lot more of those dry atmospheric conditions and that will help to suppress any significant development nonetheless this could be a rainmaker for central america especially for nicaragua so let's see how things progress over the next couple of days and of course i'll continue to keep you guys posted because even if we see one of those uh, areas of deep convection build in and then it moves inland that can result in a lot of heavy rain even if it is for half an hour or an hour that can cause some flash flooding across some areas so we should not uh, take this very very lightly i mean in terms of tropical cyclone development that is unlikely uh, right now based on the environmental conditions but it may have the potential to trigger flooding across some areas 
if it sustains enough activity. And there's a new blob that's forming this afternoon that's likely to grow as the evening goes on. And it will likely collapse like we've seen those other blobs do it throughout the day. Now let's look at some model data. Despite all that dry air, there's still some models suggesting that it could manage to reach tropical storm status and I am not expecting that at all. But the majority are agreeing that no, this won't develop into a tropical storm. And uh, the other main models that I use as well, Euro, GFS, Icon, Canadian models, they're definitely not showing development of that. But they are showing that uh, the system we looked at earlier to the southeast of Bermuda associated with that front could definitely develop. Models are all in agreement that we will see that system become a subtropical storm later this week going into the weekend. And then as it relates to conditions out there, here we are looking at the sea surface temperature map of the tropical Atlantic. So as it relates to the disturbance southeast of Bermuda, as that low is going to be drifting to the southeast and eventually making a turn to the east and moving up to the northeast, it may encounter some warm waters which may be supportive of development, 26, 27 degrees Celsius thereabout. So it could be in that sort of conducive environment to boost all that activity eventually becoming a subtropical cyclone. As I said, models are expecting that. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at them. So we're looking at GFS first, and this is as we head out into Thursday of this week. So where we see those green areas, that is representative of the precipitation rate. And those quickly black lines indicate those isobars, which are lines which join areas of equal pressure and when we see them in a circular manner and we're seeing a lot more becoming tightly packed that is a sign of intensification this is as we head out to thursday there you can see that airflow pressure forming and those isobars kind of getting themselves together we still see that area in association with the front but eventually it becomes detached as we head into this weekend there we can see the isobars tightening up as i said some intensification is expected here by gfs it is showing development next we have the icon model this is as we're going to be heading out into thursday we're also seeing that airflow pressure eventually loitering by itself out there but notice how a lot of this precipitation is displaced to the eastern side of it so that could be some wind shear acting on it eventually as it drifts up to the northeast we see that icon is suggesting some intensification then finally the euro model which is also showing that we will see intensification of the system as we head into the latter part of this week going into the weekend and early next week but eventually once it is going to be continuing north it will reach those cooler waters and a more hostile environment that would uh, eventually allow for it to become extra tropical and dissipate out there so there we're seeing that the models are consistent about that one developing and then again a lot of dry years out there ahead of 99l we're likely to not see tropical cyclone development of it but if it sustains enough activity it could be quite the rainmaker for Central America, portions of Central America. But of course, I'm here to keep you posted. So that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. And I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.